Welcome to part three in my faster PC series. In this video, I'll be upgrading a quad core Intel i7 processor to a hex core Intel Xeon processor. Also, I'll be running some benchmark tests to see just how much performance improvement I get. Once you get a chip that's compatible with your motherboard, the actual upgrade is very easy to do. Okay, to select your new CPU, you need to have a good understanding of your current system. Go to start, right click, computer, and properties. Okay, here in this middle system area, you can see this is an Intel i7 930 at 2.8 gigahertz. Also in device manager, you can get there by clicking start, type DEVI, click device manager. Um, you'll find a listing for each virtual core of the processor. Uh, so we got two virtual cores per core is eight virtual cores. But chances are you'll need more information than these built-in tools provide. I recommend um, CPU-Z. I'll fire it up here with search CPU-Z. And on the home tab says CPU, you'll see the processor version and also socket number. Note this is socket 1366 LGA. And then on the main, on the main board tab, you'll see the motherboard, manufacturer model number, and BIOS version. All useful information. Another tool is called AIDA. I'll put a link to that. Um, if you end up doing overclocking of the CPU, this is a really helpful tool because it has stress tests and whatnot. Um, but it will give you even more detail about your uh, BIOS version, motherboard. Um, and so I, I definitely recommend it, uh, but it has, you do have to pay for it after the trial version's over. Over here under motherboard, you can get the motherboard name, which is going to be very useful. So it's a good idea to get a handle on your CPU temps. Uh, I recommend hardware monitor for that. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, but take a look at your temps on your old CPU before and then look at your new CPU after you have it installed. And you want to be at or near those temperatures or, or lower if possible. So it looks like here about 3031 motherboard CPU temp and then core temps are running um, low low 40s to mid mid 40 range. Okay, so it's a good idea to benchmark, um, see where you're at, what kind of performance gains you get at the end of the project. Um, I'm using CPU M, which is an older tool that I used before. There's one in the AIDA suite that's um, probably better than this and then there's there's all kinds of online benchmarks that you can use um, Geekbench is one that's pretty popular um, just pick your choice So I did a couple runs, looks like I came up 15.5, uh, 15.6 range. Okay, once you've got all your system information, you can fire up your browser and go to cpuupgrade.com and that's uh, probably the easiest way to get the information you need on what's compatible with your system. Just click on your motherboard manufacturer on the left there and then you can scroll to your socket. Remember I have socket 1366 and I know I have an X58 SLI3. Click on that and then you'll be able to see what's compatible with your motherboard as far as CPUs go. You can see the core, Intel Core, and then Intel Xeon broken out separately. So now using this list, you have a pretty good boundary for what's possible as far as upgrading your particular system. If you have a dedicated graphics card, Xeons are pretty great because um, they don't have onboard graphics. They use that real estate for extra cores. 
Also, they tend to run cooler at lower voltages and are therefore more reliable. For this upgrade, I ended up using an Intel Xeon X5680 processor. Um, you can see here it sells for almost $1,500 new on Amazon. Did I pay that? How about their used price of $199.99? Nope, I bought it on eBay for $114. Okay, so new processor in hand, time to pop the hood. Okay, so if you have a stock Intel cooler like mine, um, the trick is just turn these push pins in the direction of the arrows, which is left. Um, you can use a screwdriver if it helps. Okay, so the turning action is an unlocking action. So once you've got each, each pin unlocked, you want to go around and pull each pin straight up. And then uh, once you've pulled it pulled it up far enough, you'll hear a, hear a popping sound. And once you hear that pretty good pop sound, that's the releasing action. And be sure you hold, hold the cooler so it doesn't fall or something if you have it sideways like I do here. Okay, when you get the cooler released, you can remove the electrical connector from the motherboard header. Okay, now to release the processor, you want to push down on this lever arm here and slide it out to the side. Once that's released, the metal shim should lift right up. Uh, you want to take care while handling the processor not to get any oil or fingerprints. Basically don't touch the bottom part of the processor uh, and handle with caution. You don't want to bend any of the pins on the motherboard either. Okay, next you want to clean up the thermal material from your cooler and your old CPU. I use this stuff on the left, uh, stuff from Arctic Clean. You can use uh, isopropyl alcohol, but something 90% or higher uh, would be better. In the middle there is the thermal paste I'm going to use, and on the right is the thermal surface purifier, which is supposedly to remove residues and prevent corrosion. It's probably optional, uh, but you get it in a kit usually with the thermal material remover anyway. So, can't hurt. I usually just put uh, three or four drops on and let it sit for a while. Um, I'm going to speed up the video here uh, so it doesn't get too boring, but let it sit for a while and, and go to work on it and then uh, get your Q-tips and your paper towels ready. Use a Q-tip to work it around pretty good. You can feel little areas that are non-emulsified and come back to those and keep working that in. When you feel like you've got everything pretty well emulsified, just use a paper towel, fold it up, and uh, wipe clean. You probably have to come back with another drop or two, work it around, get the paper towel again, uh, then before you know it, it'll be cleaned right up.
okay when it's on the new chip you want to line up these little notches with the little tabs on the mounting bracket all right the chip should go in with the greatest of ease nothing should be forced and once you got it seated make sure your lever arms up and then fold the shim down over and then push the lever arm back down to the side of the little hook and push it in under the hook there This is where you can apply the thermal surface purifier. I'm just gonna drip it onto the Q-tip first, make the Q-tip head wet, then uh, apply it and dry it off with some dry Q-tips. Okay, when it comes to applying the thermal grease, it really doesn't take that much. Um, sometimes you could just put a, a dot or a small blob right in the middle and actually be done with it um, but I've seen cases where it ended up spreading out a little bit uneven um, and even though it's a metal cap and the heat distributes pretty pretty even I found better results with giving it just a little bit of a spread uh, so it has a little bit of a head start rather than, than counting on the mechanical interface to spread out a perfect circle you definitely don't want to cover it edge to edge but maybe about a nickel size coverage right in the middle with the metal cap there right in the middle okay so the trick to installing the stock intel coolers is to make sure that the pins are unlocked and usually uh, it'll go in without too much fuss if you have a problem you want to um, prime the pins by pulling them pulling the black part up and to the left and then uh, 90 degrees back to the right and that should have them primed up pretty good another trick that uh, sometimes helps if it gets kind of fussy uh, and you're not, you're not hearing the popping sound um, you can try pushing two diagonals at the same time and uh, that'll tend to uh, keep the pins from going in at an angle and even the pressure out uh, but you keep fiddling with it uh, eventually uh, it'll get in there you know it's in when you push and pull on uh, the edges and, and it doesn't give it should feel very solid all right now you want to reconnect the fan to the motherboard header and uh, make sure your wires are routed so that um, they don't interfere with the fan operation. Uh, you can close the hood and connect everything back up. Now when you first boot up, you may get a warning like this uh, where the BIOS recognizes a change in CPU. Notice it's telling me to enter the CMOS and change the CPU settings. This may or may not be necessary for you, depending on how your BIOS handles um, the automatic settings. Um, well, I'll show you what happens here. I'm not going into the CMOS. I'm going to go ahead and let it boot up. Okay, computer booted up fine. Going back into computer properties. And here we can see uh, shows Intel Xeon X5680, 3.33 gigahertz, but note it's at 2.79 gigahertz. So that's what's known as an underclock and that's not desirable. So we'll definitely need to go back into the CMOS and uh, fix that. So heading back into the device manager, we'll see, uh, we got all 12 virtual cores showing up now. So all good there. So now firing up the hardware monitor to check out the CPU temps. And we'll find a pretty pretty cool cucumber in there at uh, 18 to 21 degrees uh, measured at the motherboard and uh, 29 to about 35 measured uh, at the CPU cores. This tells me the uh, therm thermal grease job was pretty thorough. But note also Xeons do run a little cooler than the core, core series procs. Okay, so now let's run the CPU and benchmark, see how we're doing.
18,693. So yeah, that's about a about a 20% jump over the previous score. Uh, not too bad. And uh, of course, we're still we're still at the lower clock speed. Uh, at least that's what we're being told anyway. Okay, to show what the um, the BIOS looks like. Hit hit the lead or what have you on on boot up and get into your BIOS. Um, for me, it looks like this. And uh, you know, when I first came in here, um, the clock clock ratio was uh, 21, and the host frequency was 133, which gives you the 2.8. But um, after messing with it, um, setting it to manually to 25, and uh, getting getting the right um, uh, CPU speed ended up deciding to put it back on auto and turn on the dummy overclock get a get a mild overclock since I don't have um, anything but a stock stock cooler rolling in here right now and uh, work, work pretty good on the benchmark I'll show the result here in a minute so yeah dummy clock to um, 3.5 gigahertz and was able to bust 19 on the uh, benchmark here um, the last one I was running at Disregard, I was running my video editor with that, and it's a throw out there. Okay, so yeah, for those of you interested in overclocking, I've heard of these chips getting overclocked uh, in the low low to mid 4 gigahertz range. Um, not going to do that here, don't have the cooler for it, but uh, maybe in a, in a future video we'll do that. But as far as swapping an i7-930 with a Xeon X5680, that's how it's done.